Ordovician. The late Ordovician mass extinction, which happened around 443 million years ago, is recognized as the first of Earth's big five major extinction events. This event eradicated approximately 85% of marine species, making it the second most devastating extinction event, surpassed only by the Great Dying. Most notably, it caused the disappearance of one third of all life that came about due to the Cambrian explosion, brachiopods, trilobites, and other species that dominated the warm and shallow seas. The extinction occurred in two pulses. The first pulse involved mass of ice sheets that abruptly expanded over the supercontinent Gondwana, transforming Earth into an icy climate. The glaciation rapidly cooled the water and drained vast, shallow marine habitats, where much of the planet's life thrived. Many species that had evolved in warm, stable conditions were unable to cope with the cooling waters and loss of their ecological niches, leading to massive die-offs. In the second pulse of extinction, the glaciation suddenly stopped after thousands of years and warm conditions returned. Instead of bringing relief, it gave rise to another wave of extinctions. Melting ice sheets flooded the oceans with fresh water, dismantling saltwater ecosystems with widespread anoxia, ensuring that the immense variety of species would never recover. These conditions persisted into the subsequent Silurian period, which saw the rise of more resilient marine organisms like placoderms. Some groups, including certain echinoderms and primitive fish, managed to persist and diversify in the aftermath, but the event demonstrated a fundamental vulnerability of early life, a dependency on stable oceanic conditions. When those conditions collapsed, so did much of the biosphere. Devonian, following the Silurian Silurian period was the Devonian period. Life primarily consisted of massive coral reefs, early fish, and the first forests that had begun to take root on land. However, the late Devonian extinctions, a series of biodiversity losses that occurred roughly 360 to 375 million years ago, eliminated nearly 75% of all species. The two events that stand out in severity are the Kelwasser event and the Hangenberg event. The Kelwasser event saw deep-rooted plants rapidly expanding and accelerating weathering processes, causing an influx of nutrients that fueled harmful blooms of algae and resulted in anoxia that choked marine life. In particular, placoderms and agnatha were nearly wiped out. Increased photosynthesis raised atmospheric carbon dioxide levels, resulting in severe temperature drops, decimating the coral reef systems that thrived in warm, stable conditions. Around the same time, two of the major supercontinents, Laurasia and Gondwana, were beginning to converge into what would become Pangaea. Recent radiometric dating has led researchers to theorize that the Siljan impact, which occurred around 377 million years ago, was one one of the catalysts, as it aligns closely with the first wave of Devonian extinctions and potentially had enough power to shift tectonic plates. The resulting anoxia from the Kelwasser event worsened as it carried over into the Hangenberg event, and high concentrations of toxic sulfide developed in the oceans, known as Euxinia, eliminated the remainder of the placoderms and the agnatha, paving the way for sharks and bony fish to diversify. The Great Dying, the Permian-Triassic extinction event, wiped out approximately 96% of marine species and 70% of terrestrial vertebrate species, earning it the nickname the Great Dying. It occurred around 252 million years ago and was the most devastating mass extinction in Earth's history. This event is also the only known mass extinction that extensively affected insects, with approximately 30% of all insect species going extinct. The primary driver of the extinction was massive volcanic activity in what is now Siberia, called Siberian Traps. These eruptions released enough lava that it could have covered the entire United States under a layer of molten rock more than a kilometer thick. However, the deadliest consequence was not the lava itself, but how it released immense amounts of carbon dioxide, methane, and sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere, incurring severe global warming that caused the Earth to become increasingly hot and acidic. Acid rain corroded the shells of several terrestrial organisms, such as early relatives of modern cockroaches and beetles, and the acidification of soils destabilized food chains. In the ocean, marine organisms like the trilobites who thrived for upwards of 270 million years were wiped out completely. Many life forms that weren't annihilated exhibited a phenomenon called the Lilliput effect, in which their overall body size decreased significantly in the aftermath of the extinction. Smaller organisms have a survival advantage under such conditions because they require fewer resources, have shorter lifespans, and can reproduce more quickly, which is beneficial in unstable environments. This shift towards smaller body sizes persisted for millions of years until the tail end of the Triassic period, where the earliest dinosaurs began evolving, setting the stage for the Mesozoic era, often called the Age of Dinosaurs. Triassic, Jurassic. The the most significant trigger of the Triassic-Jurassic extinction event, which occurred approximately 201 million years ago and obliterated roughly 76% of all species, was the volcanic activity of the Central Atlantic Magmatic Province. These eruptions coincided with the initial stages of Pangaea drifting apart, leading to the formation of the Atlantic Ocean. Colossal amounts of toxic mercury were released into the atmosphere, and carbon dioxide was emitted quickly and in enormous quantities compared to other periods of Earth's history. The intense, rapid warming resulted in increased storm 
storminess and lightning activity as a consequence of the more humid climate. The uptick in lightning caused an increase in wildfires that led to apocalyptic soil degradation. Terrestrial plants suffered the most, with mercury poisoning and fire damage leading to a collapse of primary producers in many ecosystems. This collapse cascaded through the food chain, affecting herbivores and, subsequently, carnivores. Furthermore, the volcanic eruptions released voluminous emissions of sulfur dioxide, which formed sulfate aerosols in the atmosphere that reflected sunlight and induced severe volcanic winters. These conditions favored endothermic animals, such as dinosaurs and pterosaurs, who were more capable at enduring harsh wintry environments than most due to their natural insulation. This allowed them to become the dominant land animals for the next 135 million years. Because dinosaurs controlled the majority of terrestrial niches, mammals evolved into small, nocturnal creatures that could thrive in hiding spots such as burrows or dense vegetation. Until the dinosaurs went extinct at the end of the Cretaceous period, their evolution was pushed into the background. Cretaceous Paleogene 66 million years ago, the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction event began when a 10-kilometer wide asteroid collided with the Yucatan Peninsula and eradicated all non-avian dinosaurs and 75% of plant and animal species. It formed the 180-kilometer wide Chicxulub Crater, whose clay shows unusually high levels of iridium, a metal significantly more common in asteroids than in the Earth's crust. The energy released by the impact was equivalent to 100 teratons of TNT, more than a billion times the energy of the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Intense shockwaves, mega tsunamis, and earthquakes unfurled across the land, decimating every ecosystem in their paths. The force of the collision ejected enormous quantities of rock and soot into the atmosphere, creating what is called an impact winter. The prolonged period of darkness and frigidity severely disrupted photosynthesis and led to the collapse of many plant-based ecosystems. Species that weren't destroyed by the blast faced starvation and propagated mass extinctions among the food chain. The ocean was devastated by severe acidification and ammonites went completely extinct. While the Chicxulub impact is recognized as the principal driver of the extinction, it occurred against the backdrop of significant volcanic activity in what is now central India, the Deccan Traps. Active for hundreds of thousands of years before and after the impact, this province released vast amounts of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere and weakened ecosystems, rendering them more susceptible to the catastrophic effects of the asteroid impact. The extinction of non-avian dinosaurs allowed smaller, more adaptable species to proliferate. Avian dinosaurs underwent significant evolutionary changes, ultimately becoming the birds we know today. This period of diversification also gave rise to primates and, later, hominins. Holocene. The Holocene extinction is an ongoing crisis, driven by habitat destruction, climate change, pollution, and the relentless expansion of human activity. It began roughly 12,000 years ago, at the end of the last ice age, but has accelerated dramatically in the last few centuries. Extinction rates today are estimated to be 100 to 1,000 times higher than the natural background rate, with species disappearing faster than at any point since the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction. As humans spread across continents, they hunted species like mammoths, ground sloths, and saber-toothed cats to extinction. Many of these animals had survived past climate shifts, but they had never encountered an intelligent, tool-wielding predator species like Homo sapiens. The Amazon rainforest, often called the lungs of the planet, loses thousands of square miles each year to agriculture and development. Coral reefs, home to a quarter of marine life, are dying due to ocean acidification and rising sea temperatures, and overfishing has emptied the oceans, with species like the Atlantic cod and bluefin tuna collapsing under relentless exploitation. Plastics are clogging marine ecosystems, while pesticides and industrial runoff poison freshwater supplies, and microplastics have been found in the deepest parts of the ocean and even in human blood. Human-made chemicals have permeated every environment, even showing up in the tissues of Arctic wildlife that have never encountered direct human activity. The average global temperature has risen by 1.2 Celsius since pre-industrial times, and this warming is occurring at a rate 10 times faster than any natural climate shift in the past 65 million years. Conservation efforts have saved some species from the brink, but if current rates continue, up to half of Earth's species could vanish by the end of the century.